Welcome to episode 85 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and I got a question. Is it the end of the brand era? Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. Today's moment of clarity comes in the form of a question. And the question is, do you really know? At work and in life and relationships all the time, we get frustrated over things that other people do. But if you're frustrated today or in the season, ask yourself the question, do I really know what's going on in that person's life? And do a little bit of work, a little bit of empathy, and see if you can't figure out why the person is acting that way. And maybe they need a help. Maybe they need some understanding. Maybe they have some deep hurt going on. And with a little bit of work, you might just be able to move the ball forward in a more positive way that everyone can feel better about. I'm so excited for what he's gonna show me. Hurry up and show me Paul's pick. Okay, Paul's pick for this week is the Minister of Defense. I'm talking about Reggie White. I'm throwing back a little bit, but he was my favorite football player as a kid. He played for the Eagles and then for the Packers, number 92. He was one of the nicest guys in the world. I got to meet him when I was a kid. And if you've ever met your favorite athlete, a favorite like musician or something like that, it does something to your connection with them. And he was an amazingly nice and kind man. He was known for that, but he was brutal on the field. There was nowhere to hide. And uh, this coming week, I'm gonna get to go see the Eagles play the Green Bay Packers at Lambeau Field, and I'm not allowed to wear Eagles gear because of where I'm sitting. So I'm sporting number 92 Reggie White Packers throwback jersey. So that I am going to be wearing Eagles underwear, by the way. But all that to say, the Minister of Defense, Reggie White, number 92. Check out some YouTube highlight reels. We'll link them up below and just watch them mess up some quarterbacks. Okay, I just heard some amazing thoughts on a podcast uh, called the CMO Podcast. Actually, it's produced by Gallery Media, which is a holding of Vayner X. Um, Either way, a guy named Scott Galloway, if you haven't uh, heard of him before, you should check out this podcast. I'm gonna link it up in the notes below. But it was sent to me by a friend, and um, it really has me thinking. So Scott Galloway is a clinical professor of marketing at New York University Stern School of Business, where he teaches brand strategy and digital marketing. He is a New York Times bestseller author. He's got a book coming out called The Algebra of Happiness. Either way, progressive thinker on brand, and he introduced a question. I think that we are out of the brand era And for a second, I started listening and getting really intense. I'm like, what do you mean we're out of the brand era? And he defines the brand era as the World War, from World War II all the way through Google. And he said, this is the generation, and this was more than a generation, but this is the age where companies could take a product and build a brand around it and kind of romanticize it and contextualize it and kind of make this allure to it and increasingly and exponentially bring value to a company because, you know, one of the examples, like you could take peanut butter that is basically the same and build a brand around it and say, choosy moms choose GIF and all of a sudden draw people to this product because they connect with it and then the company's value could go up. And he says, you know, we're moving out of that era And the era we're moving into is uh, basically the monopoly era where these bigger companies and through data and leverage and unique offerings and subscription models can basically, that's how they show value in the company. So think Amazon Prime, think Netflix, um, think loyalty programs that you pay into. They begin to own these different lanes in your life. And he said, so that is now how businesses can show value on Wall Street and show value to investors. And the ability to do that through brand is going away because convenience is starting to trump the connection with that. And I thought about that as I was listening and I thought about it after. And guess what? I have some thoughts on it. And here's what I think. First of all, I don't think that the brand era is over. Um, In the context that he's saying it, really big company showing really big value. I understand where he's coming from and it's not over. And he even says in the podcast, maybe, you know, it's just sunsetting, like we're past high noon on the brand era, whatever. And here's my thinking. The big companies back in the Mad Men days and Don Draper, like when the CMO would sit in the boardroom and be the, the, the voice in the ear of the CEO and how we can spin this or leverage this or 
contextualize this to build value in the company. Like those days are gone. But back then, those companies were the ones that had the dollars and the talent to basically monopolize great branding. They had the creative leverage. They had the money. They had the ad space. We had limited channels, limited medium to communicate brand, and they own them all. But now what has happened because of information, availability, because of lowered costs, because of the tools that are now available to make content and creative content, because those have been pushed down from the big companies that controlled all that leverage, and now mid-sized companies, small companies, individuals, kids have access to the same information and the same technology, I think we are entering a renaissance time of where now branding has, and the ability to brand and leverage a message and an organization through good, solid, empathetic, honest branding. Well, now it's for the masses. So now I think the real opportunity is just beginning. And that's why I'm so happy to be able to work with small and mid-sized businesses and individuals and be able to perpetuate this message of brand because I think everyone wins when we brand better. I think better branding makes a better world because we can be more honest about who we are, more empathetic about who we're talking to and focus on connection. How do we connect the two and then care for one another? So the brand age is not over. The brand age is just hitting its renaissance. So if you have a business or you're an individual that's trying to start a business or a personal brand or a not-for-profit organization that you want to pull people into your ecosystem, this is the is for pulling people in, like gravitational pull, pulling people into your ecosystem, you now have the tools, this talent all over the place in the market, things that can teach you how to brand, advertising platforms where you can promote the message. You have them all at your fingertips through the companies that are paying attention. Now, that row of property where the small and medium-sized businesses occupy, now it's a race. Who can build the strongest brand the fastest? Because you are going to bring and draw people into your ecosystem. And guess what? Once you draw them into your ecosystem and make a real connection, it's really difficult and it's twice as expensive and takes twice as long for another company to come pull them out of your ecosystem. I was recently having a conversation about um, two automotive manufacturers that have the highest brand loyalty, and it's Lexus and Subaru. I don't know if that's one or two. Subaru might be one. I don't know. Lexus and Subaru, top of the heap, front of the pack. And when you start talking about, well, let's try to conquest some Subaru customers, everyone's like, hmm, nah. Let's not try because we're not going to be able to do it. Let's focus our attention on somewhere else where the loyalty is not as high because they got there first and they connected. Now's the time to focus and dial in on brand first execution. And another thing that came up in this podcast that I want to mention is that you know how I talk about the brand is the center aligning piece and it aligns your customers and your team, pulls them all together to the center. Well, uh, Mr. Galloway had a really interesting take on company culture. And basically he said a good company culture, in his opinion, is one of the only long-term sustainable assets a company or organization can have. And my mind just blew. Why? Because it's true. Like technology, you're going to age out. You have good technology. That's great. In a couple of years, you won't unless you've been able to pull it off again and innovate again. A company culture is the one thing that you have complete control over 100% of the time. So I started out listening to that podcast. Is this the end of the brand era? Like, oh my gosh, is it the end of the brand era? I just got here. Um, no, it's just the beginning of the renaissance. This community is growing. Um, I have been DM'd and emailed far more over the past couple of months than I ever have. Either way, thank you so much for watching and listening and putting up with my rambling toward the end of podcasts. I know, I'm aware, I'm aware. But I appreciate you so much and I hope you have an amazing week. Episode 85, is this the end of the brand era? I don't think so. Yeah.